I don't think it was mostly sugar and raisins. Well, sugar and raisins rather than all that. I found this track. What's this track? Yeah. It's on the middle of your road. Just over the second bridge. But, uh, I don't see peace. He was nowhere around. Oh, I know it. I know it. Who are you, young man? Me. I'm a Corrales. Juliana de Artista. I see. Well, Mike, you better come up with me to headquarters and make your report. Then we'll go back to where you found the truck and look for your brother-in-law. Yes. Whatever you say, sir. I believe that there's some sort of dirty work mixed up in this business, sir. Uh, I have Mike Corrales here, boy, who found the truck waiting outside to make his report. Yeah, we'll have him on in a minute, baby. You say this cheap coke up is making a delivery of sugar and raisins into the country? Yes, sir. And that sounds to me like you might be mixed up in the bootlegging racket. Yeah, it does to me, too. It also puts a different slant on the man's disappearance. Just what kind of a woman is this wife of his, Mrs. Kokop? Well, she's Greek, of course. But she seems to have a fair education. She's very good English. Uh-huh. A young woman? Mm, about 25, I'd say. She's a tiny little thing. She didn't even picture. Any children? There was a boy about four and a little girl, not much more than a baby, playing in the corner of the bakery shop. I presume they were hers. Yeah. Well, let's have this nice Corrales in. Okay, sir. Come on in here, Mike. Yes, sir. Mike, this is Sheriff McCullough. How do you do, sir? Hello, Mike. Now, Mike, I want you to tell us all about how you happened to find your brother-in-law's truck. Well, uh, Juliana was worried about peace, and uh, she asked me to look for him. I, uh... I go to the filling station for a piece of his gas, and the man, he says he thought he'd gone out for the motor field. What did you do then, man? Well, uh, I started out right away, and when I got to the bridge, I saw his truck. Yeah, I saw his truck uh, standing by the side of the road. But you didn't do anything, I'll say. Oh, never mind, Bailey, I'll get it. Yes, my fellow speaking. You did, eh? All right, wait there. We'll be right out. I'm afraid you won't have to search very far for your brother-in-law, Mike. Is there some information on Chief Folk up there? Yes, the man who called himself our target was on the phone. Said he found a body in the woods just back of the truck. Uh, found a body? Near the truck? Yeah, you better come with us, Mike. If it's Folk up, we'll need you to help identify it. There's a car right outside, sir. Okay, let's get going.
I think I'll go over and have another talk with Keith's wife. Last time I was there, to break the news of her husband's death, and she was too upset to be able to tell me much of anything. That's an idea, Bailey. Go on over and talk with her. There's just an outside chance you might learn something we can use. Okay, sir. I'll be back later to tell you what I found out. <laughs> Mrs. Forsyth had no more information to give. Months slipped by, and then one night, Sheriff McCullough and Deputy Bailey dropped into a little Greek coffee house. They were talking to the wrinkled old woman who was serving. Uh, didn't you throw up you to eat in here pretty often? Yes, sometimes. Mrs. Pocop is still coming. Oh, is that so? But he never kept man who's here to eat Pocop, huh? No, I'm afraid not. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just funny, so anyone should have wanted to kill Pete. After all, he was a good, hard-working man who thought only of business. You think so? Maybe that's why he gets killed. Maybe he thinks too much. Of him. Excuse me. I got to wait on the question. What do you suppose you meant by that? You see, I don't know. Well, let's get back up town. Yeah. Well, that crack of the old woman has got me puzzled. There was a world of meaning behind the way she said that. It's just me. Now, let's say it's a home base we have to see. Isn't that the uh, Eliana took up standing in the doorway? Yeah. What if the young fellow is from the party? Yeah, some friend, I suppose. Oh, we might as well say hello to her. Oh, of course. Good evening, Mr. Prokop. Good evening. I thought perhaps you might have decided to sail for Greece by this time. Oh, no, I cannot go now. No? It would not be the same without people. And besides, uh, Joe here, Peter's brother, he's helping me with the shop. Oh, I see. Well, I wish you all the luck in the world. Well, thank you. Well, good night. Good night, Mr. Daly. Well, it seems that three months' time has made us a good idea. It's careful enough now, Daly. Yes, I noticed that. Hmm, I wonder. Now, wait a minute, Daly. Well, what is it? Uh, they just went into the shop together. You can see her drawing the suit across the street here. Yes, you can see a silhouette of her. If my hunch is correct, Right there, Bailey. You see that? You can see both the silhouettes now. Yes, well, George, you're right, sir. So that's what the old woman meant when she said Peter thought too much about business. Yeah, it looks as if I spoke up the slaving away, his brother was stealing his wife. If that's the case, it may prove to be the motive we're looking for. At any event, it's worth looking into, and the sooner the better. <laughs> Before Daly and Sheriff McCullough can act, however, they are called out of town in another case. And then at 2.30 in the morning, several days later, a barrage foreman in the Greek colony sees flames suddenly shoot up into the sky. The small frame house at the rear of the home base is on fire. But Daly turns into the alarm. Fire apparatus under the direction of Chief Carter and Lieutenant Blunt respond to Blunt. That's a good fast, Blunt. The frame house is burning like kindling. I'll work my way around to the north side of it, Chief. The flames aren't so bad, there, and I think I can force an entrance. Well, come along, then. I'll go with you. Oh, this window's as good as any place, Chief. Wait, I'll smash it in. Can you see anything? Not yet. The room's full of smoke. Where do I climb in? Here. I'll give you a hand. Hey, there's uh, something under the bed over there. Good Lord, it looks like a couple of kids. Get them, Blunt. Hurry. You can pass them out of the window to me. Yeah, two kids, all right, Chief. A boy and a girl. They're both unconscious. Suffocation from the smoke. All right, hand them out. Again. Let these two children out for the full motor squad as quick as you can. Well, she's right away, Chief. All right. Give me a lift up, Blunt. I'm coming in there with you. Uh, it's like the other side in the house. Uh, there you are, Chief. I think that door over there leads into another bedroom. The flames have already struck it. Yeah? Well, let's see if there's anybody in there. All right. Chief, look here. There's a man and woman stretched out of the bed. They're dead, all right, but it wasn't a fire that killed them. Good Lord. Their heads are cut through. Yeah. This is a case of cold-blooded murder. You take charge of things. I've got to report this to the sheriff's office. We got here in a hurry, sir. Yeah, Bailey and I just got back to town and we called to come in, fellas. So somebody killed Eliana Pope up in the building, Yes? Yeah. We well, took the liberty of removing the body from the house, naturally. For a while there, we weren't sure we could get the fire under control. Not now, though. I was killed him, fellas. They said everything was done to save them. They were too far gone. Suffocation. Yeah, that's for sure. Something else I want to tell you, sir. You know, it'll be connected to the murders. Yeah? What's that? This fire was no accident. What we call a flash fire. Set with oil in a deliberate attempt to conceal the crime. 
and they wouldn't be connected to the murder. Yeah, that's right. This fire was no accident. What we call a flat fire. Set with oil in a deliberate attempt to conceal the crime. Hmm. Well, that doesn't surprise me. Well, come on, baby. Let's take a look at the room where the bodies are found. Well, this sort of complicates matters, though, Miss Jeff. We had to figure out that Anna and Joe had fought a piece there. Now, what's the answer? Well, your guess is as good as mine. If they tried to keep set so they could be together, then who killed them? Too much for me. Here we are. I think it's the bedroom. Yeah, it's the bedroom, all right. Whoever did this job did it thoroughly. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder how these pieces of firewood got here. They're scattered all over the floor. Yeah, I was just noticing them. The bedroom's a funny place for firewood. Just here, Sheriff. I think we found the murder weapon. Yeah? What's that? The piece of firewood I just picked up. The side and one end are covered with blood. Well, George, you're right, Billy. There's no doubt in my mind that that's the instrument used to test the skulls of Joe and Eliana. Can I speak to you for a few minutes, sir? Oh, hello, Mike. How'd you manage to get in here? I thought there was an officer posted at the door. There is, but I guess you know who I was. This is sort of a scene with me. Yeah, it certainly is. But what is it you want to see me about? Well, I saw you and Mr. Bailey coming here, sir. I follow. I thought you might have some idea who killed my sister. I wish I did, Mike, but I'm afraid I don't. But now that you're here, you might be able to tell us a few things we want to know. Sure, if I can. Now, this fellow, Joe Procopter, when did he come to live at the bakery? He wasn't here when Peter was murdered. No, he came just a few days after Peter was killed. And he was given a room in the house? Sure. Didn't you think that was rather strange? No, why should I? He was his brother, wasn't he? Yes, I, I suppose he was. Uh, and now, Mike, I think perhaps you'd better leave us. Uh, Mr. Bailey and I have a lot of work to do. Uh, we'll let you know the minute we learn anything. Okay. And thanks a lot, sir. Yeah. Yeah. If it's not wise, there's no sense in adding to his grief. That's true. You know, Sheriff, I'm certain this crime and Pete's murder are linked in some way. Do you think Eliana might have had still another admirer? Someone who wanted her badly enough to kill Pete, and then when Joe entered the picture, gone completely possessed and murdered them both? More than a possibility. I got a hunch I may be able to learn something from one of the neighbors. So while you're taking up here, I'm going to see what I can find out. But you're sure you didn't see anyone either enter or leave the place? No, no I didn't. All I know is that I heard a series of screams about one o'clock this morning. In fact, they were so loud, they woke me right out of my sleep. Well, what did you do after you heard the scream? Well, I jumped up and ran to the window. It was too dark to see anything, but... They sounded like they came from the bakery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about how long have you known Eliana Prokop, Miss Theodore? Uh, Theodore. Mary Theodore. Miss uh, Theodore. Oh, I've known her for years. As a girl, she was the belle of the colony. She had those below us. Was there any particular favorite among these admirers? Well, yes. Eliana took quite a fancy to George Venus. But George was poor, and then uh, when Pete Prokop happened along, a steady young fellow with good prospects, her family insisted that she give up George and Mary Pete. Mm-hmm. And how did George uh, 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 do this? How yeah. do you feel about that? Oh, 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 he took it like a man. In fact, he, uh, he attended the wedding and, and later was a frequent visitor to their house. Uh, that is, he wasn't there about a year ago when, when he moved to Morton. I see. Well, thank you, Miss Theodore, for your information. Good day. <laughs> Disappointed that he exploded into his hunt, they lay rejoined Sheriff McCullough, and they returned to the latter's office. As they enter, a man who had been waiting there gets up to greet them. Uh, Sheriff McCullough? Yes? Uh, my name is Perkins. I'm an attorney here in town. I've just read about the Prokop case in the papers. I think I can give you some information that might be of help. If you can, we can certainly use it, Al. You see, Mrs. Prokop was a child of mine. Last September, about three months after her husband was killed, she brought a man to my office and explained that she wished to lend him $300 against his cafe. Uh, she wanted me to draw up the note. Uh-huh. It looked like a routine matter, and I did, as she asked. But when the man had gone, she showed me a letter. He threatened me, and I had to give him the money, she told me. But it's the last time I'll do it. If he asks me again, I will refuse. Uh, what was the man's name, Mr. Perkins? Uh, George Venus. Venus? Yes. Well, you're my hunch was a good one, after all, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you see what the letter said, Mr. Perkins? No, it was written in Greek. But I told her to put it away carefully, explaining that it might be useful in case he made further trouble. And was there further trouble? Yes. I thought that was the end of it, but the day before Christmas, we must came to my office again. Mr. Perkins, I need money. I need money very bad. I want you to phone Mrs. Prokop and tell her so. Tell her right away. 
to send me fifty dollars. I'll be nothing of the sort, Mr. Beamish. You've gotten all the money from Mrs. Fulcroft that you're going to get. Oh, yes, you will, Mr. Perkins. Take the telephone. I'll stay right here until you do. Well, I'll call her since you insist. But I can tell you right now it won't do any good. Just the same, you call. Uh, Miss Dean, get Mrs. Prokop on the phone for me. Mrs. Prokop, he will give me money. Wait and see. I very much doubt it, Venus. Hello, Mrs. Prokop? Uh, George Venus is in my office and insists that I phone you. It uh, seems he wants $50 right away. <laughs> yes, that's what I thought. Very well, Mrs. Prokop. Goodbye. She says she will not give you another cent, Venus. And furthermore, she says she doesn't want to ever see you again. He's got to give me that money. He's got it safe in the bank. Ileana, he would give me the money. But Joe, he got Ileana. I fix Joe. I fix Joe. But he's still receiving his checks against Joe when he left to my office. And that was the last thing you saw? Yes, and mighty glad I was of it, too. Any moment I expected to get a knife stuck in my head. Do you happen to have Judge Venus address, Mr. Perkins? No. But it's more than likely to be contained in the letter that he spoke up to me. If she says this is why I suggested and it hasn't been burned in the fire, it should still be in her house. Word is immediately sent out to search for any letters that might have survived the fire in the Pocock home and luck plays into the officer's hands. For police under Captain Craw discover an undamaged packet of letters in the bottom of a badly charred trunk. An interpreter is called in to translate the name that was signed with Venus' name. He promptly lays aside two with his copies in English. Two of them, eh? The first one's so tough, Billy. I need what it says. The date is September 1st, 1942. The address is Morton, Washington. Morton, eh? Yes, sir. Evidently, this is the letter Eliana showed to Mr. Perkins. Huh? What does it say? Mrs. Eliana and Joe, please, soon as you receive my letter, wire me $300 at once. If you don't send me the money, both you parties are going to be in jail. No joking about it. You know what you have been doing. I lay everything ready if you don't. You're truly George Dino. Hmm. Now, what about the other letter, Dino? The second was addressed to Joe instead of Eliana. The next date line shows it was written just a few days after Dino's visit to person. Well, go ahead, read it. It says, uh, friend Joe, learn as for help I am well. After all, I have phoned to you three times to send me $50, but in vain I phoned. As I have my store mortgage, you don't care to help me, for Eliana told me the restaurant can stay closed for a week, and I have lost seven days. In jail have I gone, but I get out of jail, but you will never get out. You can't fool me with five and ten dollars. Can you help me in this situation? The thousand was given to have your brother killed. And what was that you just said? The thousand was given to have your brother killed? Sure. I guess our suspicions were correct. Yeah, that would seem to indicate that Joe was in love with Eliana, all right, and that he wanted her badly enough to hire someone to lure Pete into the woods and kill him. So who was the man? Dina? Uh, that remains to be seen. So go on, baby, finish the letter. Okay. Think that you are hanging on my neck. The head that you wear is mine. When I get my head, you will have no head. You should know that you did it all, for you didn't let Eliana to help me, and I will treat you as you treated me. Now then, send me $50 or send me the mortgage on my store, so I will put it somewhere else to get $200 to buy. George Venus. Is that all? Sure. Yeah. Well, I think there's enough in those letters to justify our bringing them in. Arrange to get a warrant for Venus arrest, will you? On what charge, sir? Arson for the time being. <laughs> That same night, Sheriff McCullough and Deputy Daly travel 200 miles to Morton and bring back George Venus on the arson charge. The next morning, in McCullough's office. Now, Venus, let's hear where you started that fire in the bakery Saturday morning. I didn't start that fire. I was in Morton then. Ask anybody there. And I suppose you didn't write this threatening letter to Mrs. Prokop either. Not me. Not George Venus. I wouldn't do that thing. Mrs. Prokop and Joe were my friends. I had respect for them. And you insist you were in Martin on the morning of the fire? I was in Martin. All right, boys. Lock him up. Yes, sir. Come on, Miss. Sheriff McCullough. Oh, hello, Mike. Come on in. Yeah. What's on your mind, Mike? That was George Venus. They just took out of here, wasn't it? I heard you arrested him. That's right. Did he admit he did it? No. He said he was in Martin when the killing took place. Well, if Venus said that, he lied. He wasn't in Martin last Friday night. 
she was wheeled in the bakery. In the bakery? Do you prove that night? Yes. Yeah. I was cleaning up when one of the neighbors came in. She wanted some bread, but the Indiana, and Dina was in about something in the corner and didn't pay no attention to her. Finally, she had to end it up and ask Liliana to get it for her. Would the neighbor be willing to identify Dina? Sure. When I talked to her about the argument later, she said she was very angry about something, and I heard him tell Mrs. Broke up, better be careful. You know what happened to Pete? The same may happen to you. Later that day, the neighbor identifies Dina. He still clings to the story of being in Morton at the time of the fire. The sheriff McCulloch and company of the daily goes back there to check on it. In Morton, they can find no one to corroborate Dina's story. But they do receive some valuable information from a woman acquaintance of his. Information which they turn to good account when on returning to others, they again confront their prison. Just what made you think you could make that little bluff of yours work, Dina? What do you mean? You know what I mean. Trying to make us believe you were in Morton on the night uh, Eliana and Joe were murdered. But I tell you, I was there. I, I tell you. Dennis, we know better. Moreover, we ran across a friend of yours that you'd been talking pretty freely to. Who? Never mind who. When you were hard up for cash, you told this friend you knew a Mrs. Prokop in Everett would be glad to give you money. Isn't that right? Mrs. Prokop was my friend, and Joe too. Oh, your friend, eh? Then why did you say to this person, if I told what I knew about Eliana, she'd never have any money? Who says I said that? Isn't it true that Mrs. Prokop once asked you to lure her husband out into the country on the pretext of buying raisins and then kill him? She's not a scary lie. You might as well come clean, Venus. She and Joe were going to give you $3,000 for the job, weren't they? All right. I'll tell you about it. That's better. Well, Liliana, she says to me, George, it's got to be done. She says she's going to do it herself in the house. Only she's afraid it's going to scare her children. I see. So you got him out there on Mucklefield Road and pumped five bullets into him. Really? No. No. I lose my nerve. I couldn't do it. Then after you killed Pete and collected your money, you thought you could go on bleeding Mrs. Prokop for everything she had. That John, he made me mad. He took Eliana. Yeah, you were jealous, too. When Eliana threw you over for Joe and you found out she couldn't get any more money out of him, you thought you'd get even. So you batted in the head while they were sleeping and then set fire to the house thinking you'd cover up your crime. They were not sleeping. They were. I mean, I don't know anything about it. That's all we wanted to know, Dennis. Come on, Daly. What this case needs is a first-class murder complaint. <laughs> Just a moment, Chief of Police Bailey will conclude our program. Rio Grande Crack is known as the gasoline of police car performance. And wherever you buy Rio Grande Crack gasoline, you can buy real lube motor oil. We find from the highest priced mid continent crude oils, it's be waxed, be jellied, super refined, and made available to you at all Rio Grande stations in Tampa through Can. Get police car performance with Rio Grande Crack gasoline and real lube motor oil at your independent Rio Grande dealer tomorrow. And now, Chief Bailey. And George Venus was brought to trial before Judge Garcy Austin. He was found guilty of the murder of Pete, Elmer, and Joe, and sentenced to spend the remainder of his life in prison at Walla Walla. Thus ends the story of another crime that did not take. Sheriff's office calling all cars. Attention all cars. The cancellation broadcast 270. The judge are missing person. Suspect in this case is now in custody. That's all. Go with me. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsay. Bidding you good night for Rio Grande. Next week at the time, Rio Grande will present the case of the careless caretaker. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.